Yeah. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you had a good lunch. Didn't have to wait too long in line. But um, let's begin. My name is Roland. I do a bit of volunteer work for the Joomla project, for those who don't know me. Um, I'm not going to talk further about myself. If, I, if you have any questions, I'll be available all weekend. Uh, let's start with why we're here. Get up for beginners, a step forward. What is the goal of this presentation is to give you an idea of the concept of GitHub and how Joomla uses it, uh, rather than it being a workshop. Um, when you start working with GitHub you'll, or with the Joomla project and you talk to people like me and we start shouting all these terms, well, this is a bit of a laundry list of terms you'll run into. Git, upstream, staging, commit, pull request, push, pull. Maybe it means a lot to you now, maybe it doesn't mean anything, but we'll um, come by these terms as the presentation goes on. So what is GitHub? Um, I like to call it the GitHub world. We have actually three locations in the GitHub world. First of all, we have the Joomla code. That is the CMS that we work with. It's online. Uh, everybody can access it. Everybody can read it. And nobody else can touch it. Then we have your code online. So if you want to make a change in the Joomla code, you have to fork it. So then you have um, your own copy of the code online. But when the code is online, you still cannot really easily change the files. Yes, GitHub has uh, the website where you can click the edit button, but you can change one file. And you don't have any IDE that can help you find out where everything lives. So then you have to make a copy to your own computer, whether it's your laptop or your desktop. and that's your code uh, that is local. Because when you have your code local, it will allow you to change not only one file, but you can change any file that you like. What I forgot to say, if you have any question, just interrupt me, I don't care. <laughs> um, so with the code local, you can make all the changes you want and your IDE can figure out where things live if you need some help. So what we do is from Joomla code, we make a copy online, which we call a fork. Then you make a copy uh, local. And we cannot change the Joomla code because there's only a few people that have access to make the changes. That's to prevent we really mess it up even further. Um, the code online, that is your code. And the code local is also your code. So you have actually all the rights to make changes as you wish. Once your code is local and your neighbor or somebody else across the world makes a change in the Joomla code, your code local and your code online is out of sync. So maybe they are changing a file that you also want to change. Um, to make sure that you have always the latest uh, code on your desktop, you can also read from the Joomla code online to your local code. And then you're up to date. So when you make changes, you will see if you have a conflict with somebody or you're building on what somebody else had already built. So the Joomla code, as I said, is read only. And we can only request the information from it. As you saw before with the arrows, uh, we cannot send anything there. We can only read from it. And the code online, because it's ours, we can read the code and we can write to it. Um, so to make the local copy, we do a pull because you're pulling it to yourself. Uh, you can also push the information back to your code online. That's when you have made a change because something is broken or you have a new feature. And you can create requests. And request is actually that little bit of code that you have made or changed that you uh, want to get into the Joomla code. And we do that in a special place called a branch. The branch is uh, sort of lives next to the main code. And all the changes you make in the branch will not touch the main code. So you can test and you can play without actually breaking anything. Now, your code local is almost the same as online. You can read it and you can write it. Um, 
And the modify files, as I said before, it's a lot easier because you don't have one file you can change, but you can change any file. Uh, and the same as there, you can request information from your code online and from Joomla code. Uh, you can send the information, in this case, only to your code online. And also, you can make the request locally, and it's a branch. So what's the code structure look like? We have the main thing. It's called a trunk. It's like a tree. Um, and the main branch is like where everybody's working. It's called staging. And for Joomla, the next version of staging will be Joomla 3.5. There is not going to be 3.4.2. And there we have the branches. So somebody has been optimizing the CSS. Um, he made the change local in a branch. And then he pushed it to his code online. And once you do that, GitHub is so smart. He says, uh, GitHub sees that you made a change. So when you go to GitHub, it will come up with a big banner. I see you made a change. Do you want to send this code to Joomla? And then you can say yes or no or what you like. And every branch gets its own number. So it's easy to track um, who has been doing what. And if something breaks or if you want to tell somebody, please test my change, you just give them the number and they can find the code. Now practical, I will show you how we can update a language file in Joomla using the whole world of all three. We have the Joomla code and we want to make a copy to create our own code online and uh, by pulling the data. Now if you go to GitHub and you go to the Joomla CMS, there's a little box at the end that says fork. It's actually a link, you can click it. And then Joomla will make a copy uh, for you online that you can access and do with whatever you want. So then you have the code online, and then you need to bring it local. And you can do that uh, by pulling the code towards yourself. And I'm going to explain this by the use of PHP Storm. It's, uh, for now, my favorite uh, code editor. Uh, people who contribute to the Joomla project are eligible for a free license as well. Um, and otherwise, you can buy a developer license, which is not too expensive either. But let's continue with um, what most code environments work with is projects. So we have a Joomla project. You work on your customer projects. Um, so this is the screen you'll see when you first launch it and you have no projects open. It will ask you what you want to do. Do you want to create a new project or open an existing one? Well, we actually want to check one out from version control. Uh, Git and GitHub on top of it. Uh, Git is a type of version control. So when you click that, it will give you this nice box. And it will ask you, where is your code online? What is the URL? Well, you can fill that in if you know how it looks like by yourself, you can just type it in. Or you can go to GitHub itself, and on the right-hand side, you will see the little thing SSH clone URL. And you just have to click the uh, copy button next to it. And then you can copy paste it into your Git repository URL. The parent directory, well, that depends on your own system. It fills uh, the basic path to your local web server. And it needs a directory name. Now, in this case, I'm calling it Joomla test. And when I've done that, I can click on clone. And uh, PHP Storm will start downloading all those files and the whole uh, folder structure until everything is there. And by default, we have a number of branches already by the Joomla project. The 2.5 is still there, even though there's no more support for it. The 3.5 development, the master, and the staging. Um, I'm not going to explain the master. It's not important for here. But staging is the main trunk that we saw before that Joomla is working on. Um, 
So to change the language file, as I said before, we want to create a brain. So a little space where we can play with our files. And within PHPStorm, there's a red circled icon you can click. Or there's like three, four, five more options to get this list. So when you create a branch, it wants to know what the name is. Now we're changing the language file, so I'm keeping it simple. I'm calling it language. Um, this is the main language file, which lives in language engb, engb.ini. If you have the, because the Joomla core code only has the British language file, so it's the main language of Joomla. So I change the string somewhere in the file, and in this case, PHPStorm will make the, lang uh, the language file blue, so you can see it changed. It's actually something else I discovered after I made the presentation. They have on the site, you have the folder structure, and there's in the folder structure you have sort of filters, and one of the filters is called changed files. So you get the whole list of all your changed files. Now in this case it's only one file, so it's not that important, but if you have more files, it's kind of nice to see where all the files are that you have changed. So we have made the change in the file, and now we want to send it to Joomla and say, look, this string is much better than what you have uh, come up with. So we need to go from local to the online one, and that's what we call pushing, because you're pushing it to the server. There's a little red icon again you can click, or a key command, or the menu. There's, I think everything in PHPStorm has like three or four ways to get there. Um, so then we're going to commit the code by clicking that button. And the first thing you see is the commit screen. It shows you which files have been changed. And here you can type the message that will show up in, in GitHub for the person who needs to check it. To, uh, and here you explain what the changes that you have made. Uh, some other nice things is if you're working for a customer project, I use this sometimes, that you can upload the files also to an FTP server. So it's immediately on the customer's website. What's actually nicer for the project is to perform code analysis. Um, I don't know if anybody has been to Javier's presentation before lunch where he's talking about testing the Joomla core code. This is Part of that, it's where we check the code style. Uh, so what we want is if you write code for Joomla, the spaces before the code needs to be a tab and not real spaces. Um, we want the curly braces on the next line and not behind the code. So this is all checked. Uh, so when you have done, when you're done writing your message, you can press commit. And what happens is, is that the changes are made final on your computer. Do we have a mouse? No. <laughs> um, so the changes are made final on your local computer. It's not going anywhere yet. Why is this handy? For example, you're on a plane. I was on a plane two weeks ago to Joomla Day France, and somebody wanted a new feature in Joomla because of the front-end module editing, which opens in earlier versions of Joomla, it always opened in the back end. In the new version, it always opens in the front end, and some people want to choose. So on the plane, I made an option in the module manager where you can say whether the link should open in the front or in the back. Um, but on the plane, I have no internet or money to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> so what I did is I coded the whole change, and then uh, I commit the code local on my laptop. And when I arrived in uh, Nice, I connect to the internet and then I can push it all at once to the server. And that's what happens here. If you press the commit button, PHP Storm will show you this dialog for you to push it online. It's kind of obscure, but before the language, I don't know if it's if you can see it from the room, but there's a little plus sign before it. What means that uh, PHP Storm will make the branch for you on GitHub, so you don't have to make it there yourself. It will auto-create it. If the branch already exists, that little plus sign is not there, but it saves you a little bit of time in your workflow. So, and if everything here looks okay, you can click the push button, and the code will be sent to your code online. 
Now, when you go to GitHub, uh, to the Joomla repository, it will show you this big banner. It will see that you changed something in your code online uh, in the language branch. In this case, I was seven minutes after that, I visited the website. And it will show you the big green button, compare and pull request. This button will um, create the pull request for you. And all you need to do is put in the comment. You will get this screen. This text here, the correct text, is exactly the same message that I put in PHP Storm to explain what is there. So if you write a real long story, it will stop around here and continue here. And well, you can check here for writing a better description because PHP Storm is not really the place to write the whole instructions. Because what we want is when you do a pull request, we want to know what's the problem you found, what, uh, how is it solved, and how can I test it? Especially the last part is really important because when we have the bug squash events, uh, people need to know how to test it. How is how can they reproduce the problem? And you had this when we had the German bug squashing event. Big issue. And a, a lot of times I was uh, getting the issue. I was reading and I was reading and I could not really understand how to test it. And so sometimes... Uh, it's a big problem. You will get faster tester if you write for less educated people like me. Well, what they say, but the one thing, uh, a little sidestep on the box squash, what I hear a lot of people say is, well, I'm not a coder. Well, really, we don't want really so many coders on the box squash. We want people who build websites because people who build websites look at Joomla in very different eyes than that we as coders do. Um, and as you said, what we want is that step one, click here. Step two, click there. Make it as easy as possible to reproduce. Only then you will see that the code you send to Joomla will be processed faster. Because what they had in Joomla Day Germany, people click, uh, I'll check this issue. Oh, no, test instructions, next. And sometimes you have to do 10, 15 times that. And it's not really fun anymore <laughs> if you want to contribute and all you find is things are incomplete. Well, now we have Tobias as part of the Bug Squad team lead. And he is very busy going through all these issues. We have developed standard texts that we can copy paste. We'll make them available online later. So if you find an issue, We'll have these standard text, you can just copy paste them um, just to get people going on the issues. And if they don't respond, we'll close them after four weeks. Because it's no use keeping the issue there and nobody's doing anything with it. So that's what we want to see here. <laughs> uh, complete test instructions on how to reproduce it, uh, the problem you're solving, and maybe some extra information that you want. Depends. Uh, there's people who cannot code, but they find a bug. They go to the issue tracker and they can uh, put the steps there on how to reproduce it. This could be somebody that's a coder, finds a bug, or has been told about a bug. Um, and then he can write the whole story here. Does that answer the question, or am I talking about something yeah. else? Mm -hmm. he, he has tested it, and if I'm a tester after, I reproduce exactly the same. I have 90% of chances, chances that uh, it will be successful. Yes, that's what we want, right? <laughs> well, we, we want to make sure that there is no side effects. Well, that's the whole problem. I mean, it's not if you if somebody sends in a pull request. Ideally, we would want them to test every click in Joomla in every way possible. That's not going to happen. Uh, that's why we have the unit test. That's why we have especially the system tests because the system tests they check if this button is still there, if this text is still there. Um, and it's helpful to only um, code a little bit. Um, yeah, we try to make uh, isolate issues. It, but it does happen what you say that everything gets tested successfully, um, the code is put in, and something else somewhere breaks. 
it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Uh, we try to reduce it with the system tests, the unit tests, and of course, uh, the people who commit the code into the main code, we will look at uh, the code as well. Is it correct? Is there something different? Uh, and it happens that people follow the test instructions and cannot reproduce it. Yeah, that's why we want a person who tests it and says, I cannot reproduce it, write, how did you test it? What we see is that the test instructions might be clear to the person writing it, but the person reading it is testing in a completely different way and therefore cannot reproduce. Um, but that's why it's important to put a lot of, uh, as much information here as you can, other than this fixes it. <laughs> we want to know why, how, and how, especially how to reproduce. And what you said, the issue of introducing a bug is always there. That's the problem. The Joomla code base is too big to test everything, especially manually. <laughs> Um, so once you have put in your comment here with how it's fixed and what to fix, how to test it, you can click again on the green button, the create pull request. And then there will be a message um, in the Joomla repository that you submitted this. And uh, nowadays it's automatically connected to the Joomla issue tracker. It will have a label there that it has code and that it can be tested. And then it's waiting well, you can either wait for people to test it or you can tell people, please test this. Put it on Twitter, put it anywhere, because you are the owner of this pull request. So we would like to ask you to push it forward and not wait for somebody else to find it in the 600 issues that we have. <laughs> and that, this makes the circle complete because we went from the Joomla code to our code online. So we got a copy that we can change. Uh, by pulling the data out of the Joomla repository. Then we put it local on our laptop, on our desktop, uh, by pulling uh, it from the code online to local. And once we made the change, we push it back there uh, to the code online. And the important part is the question is, how do I keep my code local up to date? Because you don't want to make a fork every time you see somebody change one file. So we can pull the data from the Joomla code straight to the local code to update it. And that's how Joomla and GitHub live together. Yeah. Um, let me make the circle complete. Yeah. Um, your code local, GitHub has the names. You have, uh, we have the staging, uh, what we, no, let me put it uh, another way. The Joomla code online gets a nickname. It's usually called upstream. Uh, the code online gets a nickname, which is usually standard to origin. And so when you're local, you can type in the command uh, git pool uh, upstream. And then the name of the branch is always staging. And so it will pull the changes from there to local and it will merge them together. So you have the up-to-date information. When you do that, that's actually a good point because when you have the new changes here, they are not there yet. So you have to push those changes from other people to your code online. And that's just git push. And it will send the changes from there that you put here, up there, and so everything is in sync again. If you want some more in depth, we have tomorrow the make it happen session. I'll be happy to get deeper into this and how to do it with code. Um, but that's how you can keep your code local up to date without having to do a fork and clone the whole thing again. And you also, because you said about the staging and the master, and you said you didn't want to mention about the master. Because that's a small description, what is master? Master is really the top level. That's where the main, main code is. It's uh, the latest release, but it's Bare, almost unused by the Joomla project because we have everybody working on staging. So 
actually when a new release will come from staging, we go to the We send it to the master and it stays there until the next release comes. So that's how it's used, but not in the for daily the flow. For the final stage. Yes. And of course, it goes even further for every release. We can make a tag. We can put a, we put a tag on there. This is Joomla 3.2, 3.3, because uh, then when you wanna, because when we update the master to 3.4 and you need a copy of 3.3, you don't have it in the master anymore. That's why the tag. When you click on the tag, you get your code from that moment in time when 3.3 was released. Any further questions? Then this was the end of my story, and thank you very much for attending.